Let's talk really quickly about the difference between electron geometry and molecule geometry. So if we look here, I'm going to turn on my electron geometry, my molecule geometry, and my bond angles. So for electron geometry, let's just look at that for a second. So you'll see I have three bonds here, and my bond angle is 120 degrees. This is called trigonal planar. So it's like a triangle, and it's flat, trigonal planar. Now, if I get rid of one of these bonds and replace it with a lone pair of electrons, that's a pair of electrons that's not shared. It's just on its own, a lone pair of electrons. You'll notice my bond angle is still 120 degrees. So whether it's electrons shared in a bond or electrons in a lone pair, they're acting the same. They're still repelling each other. So this is what we call an electron domain. So it's an area of electrons. It's going to create a specific bond angle from the repulsions. It's called the Visepper model valent shell electron uh, repulsion. So valent shell electron pair repulsion model. So it doesn't matter whether the electron pair is shared or a lone pair, they're still going to repel each other the same. So that's what we call, again, an electron domain. So electron geometry is based on electron domain. So check out the names here. And I'm going to stick those bonds back in. So when I have just bonds, the molecule geometry and the electron geometry are the same. But let's replace one of these bonds with a lone pair. So you'll see my molecule geometry is octahedral, my electron geometry is octahedral. If I replace it with a lone pair, my electron geometry is still octahedral because I have one, two, three, four, five, six electron domains. So five bonds, one lone pair, six total domains, octahedral electron geometry. But my molecule geometry is square pyramidal. And if you look at it, if you were to connect the dots, you would form a square based pyramid. That's why it's called square pyramidal. So the molecule geometry is just describing the shapes of the atoms, whereas the electron geometry is describing the shapes of all the electron domains, bonds, and electron pairs. So molecule geometry is going to be a little more specific. So if I wanted to ditch another one of these and add another electron pair, you can see it's still an octahedral geometry. But now my molecule geometry is square planar. So a square planar tells me I've got four bonded atoms and two lone pairs. Again, I can ditch another bond, add another lone pair. It's still octahedral, but now my molecule geometry is T-shaped. Ditch another bond, add another lone pair. Still octahedral, electron geometry. I've still got six electron domains, but now my molecule geometry is linear because I only have three atoms in there, two bonded pairs. So I have a linear molecule geometry. So you can see we have a lot more combinations of molecule geometry than we do electron geometry. Electron geometry is just based on your electron domains. Molecule geometry is based on your shape of the actual atoms. But that is based on the electron geometry because how many lone pairs you have determines the shape of your atoms because they're still going to follow the same pattern. Check this. So I'm going to three, four, five, six. So octahedral, check the shape. Got this straight up and down and I've got four around. They're all 90 degrees. Okay. Throw in a lone pair. It's still the same shape. It's still four around at 90 degrees. It's just now this lone pair is here instead of the stick up and down. Same thing here. It's still the same shape. So even though the molecule geometry is different because the atoms look like they're different, they're really not arranged any differently. There's just less of them. And the lone pairs are taking up that space that the atoms were in. So the molecule geometry is totally determined by the electron geometry, and then just adjusted the number of lone pairs.